Joseph John Thompson was born on December 18, 1856 in Manchester, England, UK. His father, Joseph James Thompson, ran a specialist bookshop that had been in his family for three generations. His mother, Emma Swindles, came from a family that owned a cotton company. Even as a young boy, Joey, who would be later known as JJ, was deeply interested in science. At age 14, he became a student at Owens College, the University of Manchester, where he studied mathematics, physics, and engineering. A shy boy, his parents hoped he would become an apprentice engineer with a locomotive company. These hopes were dashed with the death of his father when JJ was 16. The fees for engineering apprenticeships were high, and his mother could not afford them. In 1876, aged 19, Thompson won a funding in mathematics at the University of Cambridge. Four years later, he graduated with high honors. Thompson continued studying at Cambridge, and in 1882, he won the Adams Prize, one of the university's most sought-after mathematics award. In 1883, he earned a master's degree in mathematics. When Thompson began working as a research student, nobody had a clear picture of how atoms might look. Thompson decided he would visualize them as a smoke ring and see where the mathematics describing such a picture took him. This work, for which he was awarded both the Adams Prize and his master's degree, had the title A Treatise on the Motion of Vortex Rings. In addition to atoms, Thomas began to take a serious interest in James Clerk's Maxwell's equations, which had revealed electricity and magnetism to be manifestations of a single force, the electromagnetic force, and had revealed light to be an electromagnetic wave. In 1893, at age 36, Thomson published notes on recent researches in electricity and magnetism. Building on Maxwell's work, his book is sometimes described as Maxwell's Equations, Volume 3. In 1897, at age 40, Thompson carried out a now-famous experiment with a cathode ray tube. When Thompson allowed his cathode rays to travel through air, rather than the usual vacuum, he was surprised at how far they could travel before they were stopped. This suggested to him that the particles within the cathode rays were many times smaller than scientists had estimated atoms to be. To estimate the mass of a cathode ray particle and discover whether its charge was positive or negative, Thompson deflected cathode rays with electric and magnetic fields to see the direction they were deflected in and how far they were pulled off course. Thompson used a cloud chamber to establish that a cathode ray particle carries the same amount of charge, that is, one unit, as a hydrogen ion. From these experiments, he drew three revolutionary conclusions. Cathode ray particles are negatively charged. Cathode ray particles are at least a thousand times lighter than a hydrogen atom. Whatever source was used to generate them, all cathode ray particles are of identical mass and identical charge. During Thomson's time, scientists were convinced that atoms were the smallest particles in the universe, the fundamental building blocks of everything. These beliefs were shattered by J.J. Thomson's experiment, which proved the existence of a new fundamental particle, much smaller than the atom, the electron. The world would never be the same again. Physicists now had an incentive to investigate subatomic particles, particles smaller than the atom. They have done this ever since, trying to discover the building blocks that make up the building blocks that make up the building blocks that make up the building blocks of matter. Although many building blocks have been discovered, Thomson's electrons appear to be a truly fundamental particle that cannot be divided further. Thomson was awarded a 1906 Nobel Prize in Physics for his discovery. Thompson was knighted in 1908, becoming Sir J.J. Thompson. J.J. Thompson died at age 83 on August 30, 1940. His ashes were buried in the nave of Westminster Abbey, joining other great scientists such as Isaac Newton, Lord Kelvin, Charles Darwin, Charles Lyell, and his friend and former research worker, Ernest Rutherford. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'll like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But well, before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen to see two other videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.